Tonight, I want to uh, share with you how to make your own sanding blocks. Sounds simple, right? Well, it is kind of simple. And all you need is a piece of wood and some cork sticky backed roll. Super cheap. You can make a bunch of them and they're awesome. All right, let's get into it. We've got to have a sanding block. You know what? When you're making them, you might as well make a few. I started out making these with four courses, four classes that we were having here, and I needed sanding blocks. In fact, this is what they look like. They're kind of beat up. I've had them for a while. Look at it, I got all kinds of crud on them. But um, these have been requested by students to take them home. And so <laughs> <laughs> I have given them to students and, uh, you know, writing little notes on them. But they're, they're so simple, but they're little blocks, but they're, they're sized and they're shaped and they're detailed very specifically. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. It's really easy. So you're gonna start out with some stock. If you wanna make four of them, you'll need something, um, they're four and a quarter long. So you'll need something like 17 minimum, but I've got a piece that's almost 19 here. That's what I would go with. So you'll need the stock to be one inch thick. A little more than one inch is fine. And then if we look at the width, we've got an inch and seven eighths wide. Okay, inch and seven eighths wide. A touch over one inch thick is good. One inch is good too. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is run our finger groove down both sides. That's a lot easier to do while it's one long stick. Then we're just gonna chop them into lengths and we'll finish them up from there. Okay, so that finger groove is made with a bit, I already have it in the router, um, but it's a, okay, I'll just show you this. This is a cove cutting, um, half inch cove cutting bit. What I have in there is I think called a core bit, a box core bit. Uh, it's basically just a curve right over the top. There's no pin like this one. See this one? There's no pin here. It's just a, a, a smooth arc. So the one I have in the router is seven eighths in diameter. So it's a seven eighths radius, just like a, a a nose art, okay? This is a half inch cove cutter without the bearing on there. That's why it looks like this. But, um, so that's what we're gonna use. So we're just gonna cut the groove with that. Now let's just designate, um, I wanna make, have my flattest surface down for the sanding. So this will be my face. I'm just gonna say this is the face, okay? So I'll put that against the fence and we'll run our thumb groove down each side. Now this thumb groove was carefully considered too. I've made blocks like this one, see this one? It's flat on the sides. It's, it just doesn't feel as good. It's the same size, but when you grab it, it just feels a little less uh, ergonomic on the fingers, <laughs> if that's a good use of the term. So. Uh, what we want to do is make a little cove down each side so your fingers just fit in there and it feels a little more comfortable to use for long periods of time. So this cove will only be about a 16th inch deep and it ends up being about a half inch wide. Let's go over to the router table. So I don't know if you can see that bit in there. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. So there's that bit. It's seven eighths in diameter. I mean, you could, if you had a one inch in diameter with a nose, we, we will put an attachment to this bit. We've, we've added it other times. I always forget what it's called, but I believe it's a core box bit so that you could plunge and make a rounded kind of hollowing out of something. All right, so this is gonna be our groove. I've got it set one half inch from the fence. So we're gonna run this board through with the face against the fence. So I'm gonna come in right like this. And we're gonna cut this groove that's gonna be about a 16th inch deep, both, both sides. So here we go.
So if we come in close here, you can see I ran just this little cove. If we measure the width of it, it's a half an inch wide. So I've got about a quarter there and here. And then if we measure the depth, well, if I just put that in there and I sight across it, it's a touch over a 16th deep. It's almost 330 seconds, but not quite. So I would call it a 16th plus a 64th. <laughs> All right, but now that bit has a little ridge in it in the middle, so it leaves like a little ridge in there. We don't want to feel that every time we pick up this sanding block. So I'm going to set this in here, and this is a good opportunity to use our French curve card scraper. Always good to use this. Now, if you've not used one of these, it's just like a regular card scraper, except the burr is around this French curve. And what's great about it is you can use it like a card scraper anywhere along this curve that you put a burr on there. Um, sometime I'll show how to sharpen this. It's not that challenging, but it's, it's different <laughs> than the usual. So I'm going to just ra go around and kind of feel where I see this seat nicely to this cove. You can see how if you had a larger cove, this would be beautiful to pull and and shave using the card scraper to clean it up before sanding. But here I've just got this little cove. So I'm just gonna find that spot. And look at that. I get a beautiful, I'm getting rid of all the little imperfections in there. And that's all I need. Now, I wish I had a sanding block because I would sand this little. <laughs> No, so I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper to get into this cove and I'm just going to fold it, tri-fold it, okay? It's 150 grit. I'm just going to set it in there. Let's go ahead. Whenever you can sand something long like this, it saves you handling a lot because we're going to cut this into four segments and we can do it a lot faster like this. So now I'll flip it and I'm just going to repeat the same process. Find that sweet little spot on the French curve. Beautiful. All right, just get my thumb in there. Tom, um, Lupe's asking one inch and seven eighths, why per so precise? Why not two inches? Ah, very good question, Lupe. That was part of my study, deep study <laughs> in the art of There's always a reason. ergonomics. <laughs> no, I'm serious. I, now, you may adjust this for your own hand, but I, it's surprising how narrow you actually need it to feel comfortable when you're holding a piece of sandpaper around it. So we're going to hold a piece of sandpaper around like this, and with your fingers in there, Trust me, it just feels better being that eighth inch narrower. I messed around with this a lot. You can test it. And I don't think your hands are as big as mine, so you would definitely want no more than an inch and seven eighths. You might want it even less. You can play around with it too mm. if you have time to nerd out on this. I don't think you do. But now that I've got the sides done, all that's left is to chop it up into pieces and to detail each one. So let's go ahead and cut it up into pieces. Did you say at some point what kind of wood you were using? Oh, no, I did not, but I am gonna know. Okay. This is actually cherry. So it was just a chunk of extra cherry I had over around. I would use something that's hard enough, but not something that's rock hard. I thought about using white pine, but that's a little soft. I wouldn't use hard maple. This is a little kind of in between. Um, but something with a good density, all right? So now I'm just gonna trim the end, and then I put a piece of tape on here already, right at four and a quarter. So four and a quarter inch is also very critical <laughs> for the length, all right? Of course it is. Of course it is. And here we go. Let's chop this up. Turn on the dust collector.
All right. Let's go back to the bench. All right. So <laughs> what I do to this one, I would do to all four, but let's just set those other three aside and we're going to make one all the way. All right. So uh, what you want to do is get the cork on. I'm not sure where you get this, but maybe you guys can talk out there and talk about where this came from. But see, it's got a nice sticky layer. So this is going to give you the softness. You don't want to sand right on a hard um, board because it just clogs the paper faster. You want this little intermediate cushion, but not too soft. So I've found that this 16th inch thick cork works really great. So you're just going to stick that on, on the base, and then get a utility knife or scalpel, if you're feeling surgical. I can't find my scalpel right at the moment. I know it's around here. <laughs> so we're going to just pull down the length, get a nice clean cut here. Folks are saying craft stores. Yep. Yeah, craft I stores. I do recall buying it there. So check that out. Beautiful custom cork block. Now we've got all these hard edges and that is unsatisfactory. So <laughs> let's fix those up. Cannot have that. No, no, because I can feel it. Now here's, there's several things going on when you're holding a sanding block, you're holding it. And I often, you want to be able to hold the paper around it. And my, your fingers, I have one finger goes over the end and then very often this corner is in your palm like that. Okay. So see that, that makes it feel really comfortable in your hand to hold it just like this. So it's very key to round these corners and I round them pretty strong. So that doesn't bite and you don't get annoyed by your sanding block. So you could do that a lot of different ways, but this is a great opportunity to use the big belt sander. The white belt sander. Wow, two weeks in a row, belt sanding. <laughs> All right, so here we go. I'm gonna first just round the edges like this, and then I'm gonna let the corners go. I've, I've got like 150 on here, but it cuts pretty fast. So. Okay, nice, now the corners. Okay, that's it. I don't spend much time on it like that, but I, you know, then I'm going to take a sanding block. I'm going to take a sanding block and actually <laughs> detail it a little more because it's hard to hold that perfectly. So you want to just work your corners. I want to round these off a little smoother just to blend the little bit of edginess from the belt sander. But notice I didn't go down to the bottom. You can also knock the sharpness off these corners down near the cork. I didn't do that on the sander because it's so aggressive, but so we just finish it like this. And see, we've got a nice round over there and that's great. Now this corner, so you really want those corners softer, you know? All right. So here we go. Now I'm going to put it back in my hand. I wrap my fingers. Oh, now that. It's a beautiful thing. Now, using it is another thing. So you're, you're gonna take your paper. I always quarter my paper. So there's just a piece of 150 grit. So the, the uh, block is four and a quarter. The paper is four and a half. You may say, why don't you just make it four and a half? Well, I've made it four and a half. It's a little too long. All right, just trust me. Uh, and it also, it actually gives you a little margin. Look at this, this paper was just quartered. So I have just a little margin front and back, almost an eighth of an inch or so, right? So when I'm sanding, 
I'll, I can move it. Now here's the key. Using this block with a quarter piece of paper, you'll get more life out of your paper if you don't just slap it in the middle. And please don't put it this way. It's really annoying because you're, you're wasting paper. You're just using the middle. Here's what the beauty of this block being this size, you're going to put it on and you're going to slip it over to one side. All you need is about three quarters of an inch here and you just bring that up and you bring the other side over and then you just squeeze that and it's easy to hold right into those finger holds and there it is. You've got a, a good grip on it. So you're going to use it, you know, whatever you're doing and then after you've worn this, you know, then you're going to just slip it over. Now check this out. So we've got a whole nother strip right here. We can just slide it over and look, we get about the same wrap. So you're using so much of your paper. You get two good uses out of that. And sometimes I'll even use that little edge there when I'm feeling cheap, but you get two slips on it. Okay. With your sanding block, it makes really good use of just quartered paper and it fits really nice. Now experiment with it. If it's a little too small for your hand, you want a bigger one, go for it. But I'm telling you, you're going to like this. <laughs> All right, everyone. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. That's a nice, fun little utility back to basics. Every now and then you got to make things for the shop. And why not make a first class sanding block? Well, thank you once again for yeah. hanging out with us. Remember, if you enjoy this content, please consider subscribing, liking and sharing and all that good stuff. On behalf of the camera lady and myself, yes. we look forward to seeing you next time, right back here on Shop Night Live! Oh my gosh. Good night, I, everybody. <laughs> I let up for one minute. Okay. Have a Sorry, great I week, had to you do guys. It. Thanks for joining us. Good night. Good night. Sorry, I just...